The beautiful rocky coastline of St Abbs is a mecca for nature lovers, divers and fishermen, most leave with happy memories. But for Simon Haston, this place will always remind him of the day he nearly died. It was just that we just came down fishing, as we often do. Uh, my friend David, who I was with, he knows the area. He kayaks, we'd been down once before and he kayaked around the area. So we knew roughly that we could get onto the rocks. We thought safely down beside the lighthouse. The, where we were standing was very dry uh, and secure. There was a few little rock pools amongst it. I think I must have got the soles of my feet wet rather than the rocks being wet. And I've stepped onto a bit that was a bit slippier than the rest. Uh, from feeling very secure, I suddenly found myself sliding down the rocks. Simon fell head first into the water and was washed into a narrow cave. He was at the mercy of the swell. Luckily, a passing fisherman realized what had happened and immediately called the Coast Guard. Within a matter of minutes, lifeboat operations manager and former helmsman, Alistair Crowe had been alerted. Appreciating the risk to the man's life, Alistair elected to launch the lifeboat immediately with the people he had at hand. Including himself, the crew consisted of former crew member James Crow and helmsman Darren Crow. Alistair explained what, what, what it was. He said it was a fisherman round just below St Ab's head. So we took off round there, never expecting it to be in where it was, going by the amount of swell that was going in there. Having been uh, fishing that area for all my life, I knew exactly where the fish. There was no points where the anglers fish. I knew it was one of them, so we knew exactly where to go. So we cut through all the rocks on the way up just to make a, a shorter journey. And arrived there as, as fast as we possibly could, you know. The rock, the, the boulder that I'd managed to pull myself up onto, it was a fairly big rounded boulder. So I just I lay down on that. Uh, that was kind of when you become aware of the cold and the damage to my hands and things. That was when I became aware of that. And I really, I knew that I wasn't getting out of there on my own. And then the RNLI boat turned up and I thought, excellent, that's me, I'm safe now. But then I realised that they couldn't actually get their boat in either. Uh, and just, I don't know, I just thought, how am I actually going to, how are they going to get me out? The entrance to the tunnel was very narrow, and so the only option was for a crewman to swim in and rescue Simon. Darren didn't hesitate. So we got ready, brother got a rope tied around me, and I jumped in. I was quite scared, like, because the, there was quite a lot of swell going in there. I didn't care whether I was doing it, whether I'd volunteered for the right job or not, but no, I went in. You just pray everything's going to go right because he's my brother's son. Secured by a line, Darren commenced a perilous 20 metre swim. With his life jacket inflated, he was a more buoyant thing, so he was pushed in faster, you know. So I wasn't sure if he'd get out at all. But that was the plan, was to tow him out if we had to. And just as I got to him, just as I was about to reach to grab him, there was a wave came in and swept me right up in front of Simon and it washed me right back out the, the gully again. So I had to swim all the way back in again, grab a hoodie him, eventually got a hold of him, right? and I could tell that he was all cut up and he was shaking like a leaf. He was terrified and he, he just didn't have an ounce of swimming left in him. Right? I think it was close to passing out, just with exhaustion, and I thought if I pass out, I'm back in the water and I'm in trouble again. If they hadn't turned up then, I don't think I had a whole lot longer. So I, I was, they timed it well. I couldn't have put a time scale on it, but I didn't think he would have had long, because the tide was filling, and if that guy was just not going to get back into the water, that cave submerges at high water. I remember him quite clearly saying, you're going to have to get back in the water and just kind of swim out with me. And I, at that point, I was just drained. I thought, I'm not going to be able to do that. I just had no energy. And that was it. Jumped in, jammed my, kind of jammed my arms in the back of his life jacket and tried to help paddle out. That was it. Just looking at where I had to swim back out again with this guy on my back, with the waves coming in, and it was just a total nightmare. And I'm quite a good swimmer, I know, but I was on the very limit that day. I thought I was actually going to go and do an app. I did have fear that day. That's about the only ever time I've had fear at the sea, is doing that rescue. 
Alistair and James hauled on the rope to get the pair safely onto the lifeboat. I remember landing on my back at the bright orange bottom of the boat and thinking, there we go, I've got, got away with it at that point, I suppose. That was when I first thought, it was when I first really knew that I'd, it was over, kind of like I got away with it. Simon was now safe and considers himself very, very lucky to be alive. And I think, I, 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 well, I, I know I would have died there if they hadn't been here to come and get me. I would have died, I. I would do it again, because that's part of the job, but it's only the crew that you've got round about that you rely on, on jobs like that. Safe the brother, the line that was attached to me, if that wasn't written, I would never have made it that day. I couldn't have done it. Massively grateful. I owe them, I owe them my life. I've never, never had to say that about anybody before. <laughs> uh, but I, I feel I, owe, I do owe them my life.